What are the key things to look for when choosing the best luggage for travel? And what are the best backpacks and luggage on the market right now? Stay tuned to find out. What's up guys, Steven here from Ginger On The Go and we are back with another video on how to travel. Today we are going over the best luggage and backpacks on the market right now what makes them good, and what you should look for when choosing your own travel luggage. But before we get started, if this video has helped you, then do us a favor and help us by smashing that like button. Smash it, smash it, smash it. All right, let's kick off this video by going over what you should look for in the best travel luggage. Now, we're not gonna dive too, too deep into this because unless you geek out for this kind of stuff like me, then honestly, it's pretty boring and I don't wanna bore you and you don't wanna be bored. But we will go over a few things that everybody should look for when choosing travel luggage. A few key things I always look for when choosing a travel bag are if it has TSA approved blocks, if it's water resistant, the type of material it's made out of, if it's expandable in the type of wheels and handle it has, but we will go through all of these as we go through the bags later in the video. If you are opting for luggage over a backpack, the first decision you will need to make is if you want a soft-sided bag or a hard-sided bag. And this is where it is important to know what you'll be using this bag for so you can make the right decision for the luggage that is right for you. Hard-sided or hard-shelled bags are bags like this. 1,001, 1,002. I don't know if you heard me counting, but I did over a thousand. It's actually, I'm not even mad. That's amazing. <laughs> they have a hard shell that covers the entire case, offering more protection than a soft-sided bag. They are also harder to steal from. Not only do hard-sided bags offer more protection from things getting smushed, but they also offer protection from liquids from other bags soaking into your bag which is actually a thing. This one time I was on a overnight bus to Greece. I got out of the bus at 4 a.m. I went to collect my bag. Well, somebody had thrown their bag on top of my bag and they had a box of red wine in it. And when our bags hit, the red wine busted. And where did all that red wine go? It soaked right into my bag. Luckily, no electronics were harmed, but about 90% of my clothes were stained red, meaning I had to wear them for a while and then eventually throw them out and buy all new clothes that person owes me it's money so protecting your belongings from other luggage it's not a very common thing but it does happen for hard-sided bags the most popular and best material is polycarbonate because of its impact strength lightweight and durability but if weight is a huge factor, the lightest material is polypropylene. <laughs> what are these terms? Am I running a science channel? Bill Nye, I'm coming for you. And soft-sided bags are bags like this. They offer less protection, but have more give, meaning you can usually cram a little bit more into them and squeeze them into tighter spaces where a hard shell bag will not fit. For example, on trains and stuff, you usually have to slide your bags under the seats. Hard shell bags, it's hard to do this because they can't conform. Where a soft shell bag, you can usually put some effort into it and eventually get it crammed under there. Soft shelled bags, the material you wanna look for is woven nylon. This is one of the most popular materials for soft shell bag because of its lightweight, its durability, and it's water resistant been used in making bags for years and years and I see nothing taking its place anytime soon. Personally, I love hard shell bags because they offer more protection and they're harder to steal from, but I also travel with a lot of electronics I want to keep safe. If you are looking for something lightweight and you just have clothes, then a soft shelled bag would be fine. Size is another big factor that we need to talk about and choosing the right size for you will vary depending on how you travel, the length of your trip, and where you are going. But the two main sizes that we need to talk about are check-in and carry-on, and everybody knows what these are, but let's quickly go over the differences of what they mean. Check-in bags are bags that are stored in the plane now the correct size for check-in bags varies airline to airline, but in general, if your bag is over 22 inches, you will need to check it in under the plane. For a backpack, any size backpack can be checked in. Even this little guy right here, I could check in if I wanted. But in general, 
you have to check it in if your backpack is over 45 liters. Again, this varies airline to airline. Some airlines let you sneak in with bigger backpacks, but it really just depends on who's working that day, how crowded the plane is, and if they'll let you. So it's good to prepare that if your backpack is over 45 liters, there's a good chance you will have to check it in. Carry on our bags that go on the plane with you. This is where all your expensive items should be, whether it's a laptop, camera, non-liquid medication should always go on your carry-on, not under the plane. That way they don't get damaged or stolen. You never know what's gonna happen. So it's good to always keep these items by your side. Like check-in luggage, the size for your carry-on varies airline to airline, but generally, if it's under 22 inches, you can carry it on. If it's under 45 liters for a backpack, you can carry it on. A lot of people like to travel with a check-in and carry-on, but as I remind people in my wonderful, informative, fantastic, did I sell that video enough? Packing for your video, which will be in one of these corners, don't overpack. If you have extra space, even if you're not planning on using it, you will fill it as you go, which just makes it a hassle. Adding extra weight, a bigger mess, it's just smarter to travel with only what you need. Limit yourself. That's part of the beauty of traveling is getting away from the things you don't need. So leave them at home. Now it is possible to travel with carry-on only for a long time myself. I traveled with just two small backpacks and there are some pros to traveling with carry-on only. First of all, you don't have to pay for luggage, which can save you between 30 and $100 a trip. Secondly, you don't have to wait a baggage claim. You get off the plane, you have your bags, you just go straight out of the airport. You don't have to wait there with 100 people waiting for your bag to come. And it reduces the risk of the airline losing your bag. And if you're a minimalist traveler like myself, then straight carry-on is the way to go. I'm really trying to get to the best luggage, but one more pro tip before we dive into the suitcases, a lot of airlines let you add luggage up to a few hours before your flight. I've added luggage on the way to the airport. This is good because if you're not sure if you need luggage, don't add it when you buy your ticket. You can add it in the future if you end up needing it, but it does cost a lot more to add luggage from the front desk. So if you end up needing it, just make sure you add it the night before, four or five hours before your flight. Don't add it at the airport. Okay, enough enough about what to look for in the best travel bags. Let's actually look at all these bags. Now I will say I don't have all these bags on me because I moved to Sweden last year and a lot of these bags are still in Ohio, but I have used all of these bags before and I know what I'm talking about. Okay, first up we have the Travel Pro Max Light 5 expandable luggage. That is a heck of a name. And one of the best features of this luggage is that it is expandable. So you can extend the luggage to get a couple extra inches of space if you need it. And it has an easy to grip side handle. The luggage rolls smooth, has a luggage ID holder and two spacious front pockets. Inside the luggage, you have a mesh pocket and two straps and a side pocket for some added storage. There is also a secret pocket inside where you can store some valuable documents and don't have to worry about them getting stolen. Now the Travel Pro Max Lite 5 has a flexible shell that offers a lot of impact protection and durability as well as TSA locks. Now Level 8 is my newest luggage brand obsession. Not only are their bags super stylish, but they are also quality made. Things I really like about the Voyager are the stylish protective shell. It's sturdy and it looks cool. More than once on my recent trip to Italy, I caught people glancing at this luggage from the corner of their eyes, checking out how cool it was. And I'll be honest that this luggage spins easier than any wheeled suitcase I've ever had before. It almost spins too well. And by that, what I mean is like on a bus, I always had to cling on to it because any little turn the bus took because the luggage spins so well, it always wanted to go flying off. Another thing I really like about the Level 8 is it has a ton of pockets inside and some of these pockets are water resistant but also see-through so you can see what's in them without unzipping and rummaging around and messing everything up. Another great perk about the Level 8 Voyager is that it can be zipped 
shut on both sides which is more uncommon than you think and it has a little unfoldable shelf area this luggage also has two tsa approved locks and it is easy to clean and as an added bonus level 8 ships their luggage with stickers so you can spell out your name on your luggage so everybody knows that it's yours but chances are it's so stylish that you'll have the coolest bag on the plane if you want the best travel backpack on the market there are a lot of opinions out there but for me it has been and probably always will be the osprey farpoint 70 liter i traveled the world with it full time for over seven years to 60 different countries i actually wore it out so much in the first four years that i had to get a new backpack and after doing a bunch of research about the latest backpacks i just went ahead and bought another osprey farpoint i love it that much the osprey farpoint 70 liter also has a size of 23 by 15 by 9 inches and weighs around five pounds I've used this bag for years and it still continues to be the best backpack on the market. It has an internal frame that can hold up to 70 liters of stuff, which means you can easily fit in all the gear you need for a round the world trip and then some. Another thing I love about this backpack is both sides have side handles, it unzips the whole way and it unzips from the front down. I'm not a huge fan of top loader backpacks because if you want to get to something at the bottom of your backpack, you have to dig all the way down through the top, not with the Osprey Farpoint. A big selling point for the Osprey Farpoint is that it comes with a day pack that zips on and off the main pack. This is great for long travel. You just zip your day pack onto your main backpack and head through the airport. But if you're just going out on a day trip, zip it off, put on the little bag, leave your big bag at home. All right guys, this time we have another carry-on and this is from level eight as well. The main reason I like this bag is the laptop pocket on the front. It is easy to unzip, pops open beautifully, and it makes it quick and easy to get to your laptop or other important wires. This suitcase has a polycarbonated shell that is covered with three layer micro diamond texture that makes it extremely scratch resistant. So not only are you positive that your electronics are safe, protected from getting scratched, Apart from the awesome laptop compartment, this bag features a recessed TSA combination lock, perfect for international trips where you want to keep your things locked up. Inside, it has organized dividers for easy packing, a spacious interior, and multiple pockets. And there we go, guys. My current favorite backpacks and suitcases, and also some things to look for in case none of these fit the bill. If you have a favorite bag that didn't make this list, reach out in the comments below so I can check it out. And if you like this video and found it helpful, then do us a favor and like this video. If not, don't like this video, but don't dislike this video. Just do nothing. You will do nothing. The next couple of videos will be very exciting. They're based off of comments that you guys have left. And I can't wait to make them. Till next time, travel with confidence.